Good day, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Black Book. And we're on the road. First things first. Oh, excuse me. So, Ben, first things first, we'll look at our decks. Oh, our ver versions of them. Uh, right. And that one is a mess. We will have to reconstruct it. I uh, did find a nice card. This one here is very nice. Adds weakness. Which basically then adds curse, which is quite a nice combination. I mean, it'd be actually happy to get rid of this one, which does us damage. And get that. Because that's well versed, it actually plays in. Is there anything I want to get rid of, really? Firm are always good for dealing extra damage. I only have one of the removed negative status effects in my deck. That looks that seems rather stupid. But let's get rid of that. Try this. That's actually pretty bad. If only had more of those in the deck. Apparently I do not. I should have bought some then. My mistake. Okie dokie. On the road again. Watch your road. This road is close to the forest. I should keep an eye out. Among the treetops, you notice a silent giant. His figure towers over the trees and sheds a dark shadow on the frozen road. Call out to the spirit, draw a circle, come closer. Let's call out to him. You greet the chort, but hear only loud laughter in reply. A sudden wind bends the tall pines. Okay, uh, northern settlement. Somewhere around here is a house where Alexander went to. You should be easy to find. You find the Izba Alexander told you about without any difficulties, and question the locals. As it turns out, the husband of the sick woman died recently. Your acquaintance is already here. Let's look around. There are some traps. These are fishing traps. Looks like the husband used to be a fisherman. Bench. Furniture as well as the rest of the Isba has fallen into disrepair. It's clear the woman can't look after the house alone. The chest. You open the chest and are hit with a foul stench. Inside lie everyday items of the woman and several linen sacks. It seems they are the source of the smell. Inspect the sacks. You wince in disgust. The sacks contain horse manure, wriggling with worms. These are the gifts of a demon. To cursed people, they seem like gold and prianix. For a, tra a traditional sweet baked goods in Russia, Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, and other neighboring countries. Bed sheets and towels, nothing of interest. The book. Interesting. Vasilisa, 
It's so good that you're here. Alexander coughs and glances at your book. Did you examine the sick woman? Yes. The case is indeed similar to that in the Logova village. The woman is weak, but it's not so bad as that time. It's still early. The demon only started coming to her. What is she saying about the chort? There was no mention of chorts. You think they're to blame? She says it's a simple fever. But the symptoms are rather strange. I thought it to be anemia and nervousness. She buried her husband not long ago. It seems strange because it's not a simple sickness. She can't tell because the demon has some power over her. What should we do? The snake doesn't appear often in the beginning. We'll have to make it. If she tells me about it, it will surely come. It's late. It will try to kill us. Uh, right? I won't stand in your way. Let me be. I need to rest. The fever won't let me be. They say you became a widow. Oh, Jesus Christ, may he rest in peace. Yes, he died, but I'm managing. Sometimes dead husbands come back from the afterlife. Have you heard of that? What kind of s story is that? That sort of thing never happens. Lord have mercy. Don't try to be cunning with me. I've seen all kinds of charts, and I can sense the walking dead from a mile away. Pfft, witch! What could you know about me and my Vasya? You know nothing. Maybe I'll be able to convince her if I pretend to be her acquaintance. So, what did her husband do? Fisherman. Perhaps he was a fisherman. Looks like it. There are fish traps in the corner. What do you mean? I know you through my godfather. He used to go fishing with Yovasili quite often. He won't be fishing any now. He's dead, I'll tell you. Go away. You and your groom let me rest. Hmm. She still doesn't believe me. How can I convince her that everything's not so simple with her guest? The gifts. You think your Vasily brings you sweets? Take a closer look. Jesus, what have you done, witch? I know who is to blame for your sickness. If you want to live, you must tell me. All right, I'll tell you, but don't you tell anyone. My husband didn't die. He still visits me in the evenings. But he told me to keep quiet. People won't understand. You hear the sound of scattering sparks. A fire short, familiar to you, emerges from the stove, and it immediately turns into a human. Again with your plot switch. Don't interfere with my business. You want to kill me? Didn't work out for you last time. Ha! Kill? <laughs> I have another purpose. You stopped me here, but I'll find other creatures. Not so fast! You can't hide from me in my uyest! That may be so. That's why you will be busy with my new friends. I won't be back here. A couple of chorts appear near him, while he himself turns into a fiery whirlwind and disappears into the chimney. You can catch up with that chort if you don't spend time on these demons. But what will happen to the sick woman? No, we're going to stay and protect her. You open the book and read the first Zagavar. Try and keep our in sins low. Okay, so they're coming out swinging. Um, let's produce that. We will then... With what we have... Well, bad blood up. We'll start taking out the weak ones. Get a bit of armor. Yeah, we'll do that as well. And we'll poison the big dude. He's taken care of. Burning bloods in play. Take a little bit of damage, but they get poisoned in return. We can easily recoup our losses of health. In the meantime, let's punch him.
This should be enough. Yeah, enough to kill him. Okay, take two pages immediately. Use instantly bypass his Zagavas. Choose a page and add it and plus one damage. Um, well versed waste five. That is very nice. You defeated the Chorts, and the woman seems to be safe now. But how many souls will this fiery snake ruin? No one knows the answer to this question. You can only continue on your way. Maybe, like, a more ruthless person would probably have just... A more ruthless person would have probably just left to her fate and gone after the demon. But that didn't seem that fair. I'll take this one because well versed will increase the effects of it, which is always very, very good. Um, I'm going to drop one of those. And grab, if it is still there, this. Yeah, because we take a bit of damage. But if we have black, um, the blood enchantment up, it will do wonders for us. So, we'll take that and we'll head back on the road. This river is small, but the demonic presence here is strong. All of Vakul, all Vakul is doing. You notice the pale heads of the drowned looking out of the water. They are almost certainly waiting for a careless victim to drag under. Let's talk. Realizing they were spotted, the undead lazily hide beneath the water. Let's ambush them. You hide nearby, and the drowners soon return to their spot. You open the book and read the first Zagavar. Let's see what we got. So they're coming out strong. Um, we've got to take a, a good chunk of damage unless we do something. Um, yeah, we've got to take a chunk of damage. There's nothing we can do about it. Waste is going to be a pain, so start stacking that ability of theirs. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Get negative effects out of the way. Continue to stack waste. Um. Not a lot we can do actually. I'm gonna take damage no matter how we play this. Yeah, like our waste is increasing. These guys are annoying. Because, yeah, he's got to do the armor thing. Okay. Get that up. And we'll go... That on him, which won't kill him. But it'll do enough... To that guy. We will we'll pop some healing herbs. Okay. He 
so that's down in the ground. So he's got the armor up. We're going to take a bit more damage. Uh, do well versed. Buff him. Hopefully, get some healing done. Any healing cards coming out? No. Decompose. Okay. Yeah, let's stop messing around. This guy's just going to be a pain. So, let's just finish up. Dead. Double curse. Ward isn't so bad. So we'll grab that. Ooh, there's a fair. Yeah, that's a good place to go. Fairs are very useful. At the crossroads of two trade routes, you see the annual fair. Despite the late hour, trading is still taking place. Perhaps you might buy something for your journey. A multitude of goods can be found. Prianix, as well as a variety of magic trinkets. There's something for everyone here. Let's check the What kind of first. wisdom do you possess? That which comes from above, or that of snakes and demons? Okay, what pages could we get which are useful? That gives us sin, I think, if we use it. Yeah, like, this is the thing. If I use these, I think we get sin. I'm not totally sure. Five damage. If enemy dies... Three damage to every idle chort. Maximum of... Minimum of one. So that plays into us not having as many chorts active. Hmm. I will go to the herbalist though. What do we want to buy from the herbalist? Yeah, those are useful. General healing stuff is always good. Heals when enemy loses health. Vampirism. I'll grab the, the common healing herbs. They don't have any of the, the powerful stuff. Um, we'll grab that. I'll grab one of these because removing positive status effects of enemies is always potent. Let's see what you Buy have. An amulet and you'll be as healthy as a boar. Demons flee. Okay. And I usually see the enemy's hand and Durak games. These are all Durak stuff. Trump one. We'll last an extra round. Gain prayer on the beginning. Replenish. At the start of the battle, it was nice. Those gives us King and Curse at the battle start, yeah. Spike isn't too bad. Gain plus two vampirism at the start of um, the start of the battle. That's not vampirism's not too bad if you've got a deck build for it. 
composition, destruction, piety, prayer. I mean, I'm not going to use that one's nice, but I don't really use prayers that much. We'll have to sell some stuff soon, though. Seeing a wee bit cramped in here. Uh, I will sell the Golden Goddess. Okie dokie. And that's done. And what's here? It's a whole of tins barnyards. There's nothing dry or store. There's nothing to dry or store in the barn yet, so the youngsters are enjoying themselves. You hear the lingering sounds of songs long known to you. At one of the izbas, you see a late-running vichorka. It may be worth stopping to listen for a while. So it's basically an evening party. You sit by a house and dissolve in a deep song. Healed. I need to find out exactly where the brewers put the boiling pot. I don't want to wander along the culver or night. Life goes on as usual in the sleepy Pakcha village. The peasants have returned from their work and fill the village with hearth fire glimmers shining from tall windows. The shop is still open. Let's visit the merchant. Do they have anything good? Steel scythe chip, defense gains plus one. Not bad. Besides that, nothing of interest. Let's visit the church. You whisper a prayer and catch your breath. And we heal up. Fantastic. The peasants answer your questions with enthusiasm when they learn that you are the knower matchmaker they have heard of. According to the villagers of Pakcha, they seldom encounter wonders in their mundane life. Everyone laughs at the men who were brewing beer. Supposedly, they were so carried away with their work that they saw the devil himself. Another song. Uh, shouldn't have done that. Uh, demons. Where was it? A Noah matchmaker. Cordoons were always invited to weddings as the best man. In our village, Cordoons were also matchmakers. One time, the parents of a groom sent their neighbour to ask for a bride's hand. He went there at midnight, taking care to walk through vegetable patches. If anyone noticed him walk o walking over, the wedding was sort of fail. The moment anyone learned of a wedding, they put the evil eye on it. They would, there would be a family, but no happiness to day-to-day -day life. The Cordoon protected the wedding from curses and, evil, and the evil eye. He also knew to avoid saying too many words, and only Cordoons knew the right ones. He knocked on the door and the host let him in. He sat on the bench by the door and put his mitten in the corner. Even though it was, it was summer, the girl's parents immediately took the hint and put, the, put their daughter behind the stove. The Cordoon sat behind the table and said... We have a ram, you have a, a you, should we bring them together? The parents refused, even though they were willing. They refused a second and a third time. Then the courtroom realised he had not asked for permission to enter, but stepped across the main beam regardless. He walked backwards or out to the door, taking the mitten with him and knocked again. The second time he did anything properly. The parents agreed and the wedding took place the next month. Okay, let's find the brewers. You easily find the home of the peasants who brewed beer, but their izba looks empty. You look into the galbets and see a man who is putting crosses on vials and barrels. He jumps when you call out to him. Christ almighty, what are you scaring me for? 
I nearly died. I knocked, didn't you hear? I'm here about the wedding. They asked to bring beer. We couldn't cook the beer to the end, you understand? The bride is a chort in disguise. Everyone knows that. So some of them sharp-tailed visited us. We barely managed to escape. With God's help, I'll bless the ingredients. We managed to brew the mash, then added hops to the cauldron. Everything with God's words. Everything proper. A pound of hops and a pound of malt. And then a demon showed up. Lord of mercy! Tell me about the demon you saw. Someone cursed us. That must be it. Looked like a lump of meat that kept glaring at us. So we ran. Left everything there. We prepared part of it, but we're too scared to go there now. So you brewed everything by the book? Everything as it should be with prayers and according to the recipe. First, the girls came to us from the bride's side, tried to put out the fire. Then, later, closer to the evening, a man came along. And at nightfall, it all began. The bride's cursed, so the devil showed up. What man? I don't know. Didn't have the chance to look at him proper. He stood for some time in the distance and then left. That sounds like a cauldron. Did you brew by the river? Right. Wait, you're going there now? This late? You'll be killed! It's alright. I have God's word with me. The devil will have to retreat. Well, God be with you. Go to the east of the last Isba. You won't miss it. Time to go. Beer is being brewed in a large pot by the river. It's quiet in the brewing area. Too quiet. You anxiously look around. Evil spirits definitely had something to do with this. This cauldron is full of partially brewed beer. You feel an evil force hiding beneath the black surface. Okay, so the demon's in the cauldron. We need to get it out. Not good. Um... I know we run a little bit longer than normal, like we normally run longer than this, folks, but I have to end it here today. I've been Cornus Knight, this has been the Black Book, and next session we are going to be getting into some really juicy encounters. So I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye, folks.